You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Merry Merry After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Merry Merry After Show. <laughs> I love it. It's like you're looking right. through a telescope. Is this better? <laughs> <laughs> Come better on. For you yeah, guys. Guys. <laughs> Let's get it. it smells, we changed the music up for Chloe. Oh, it does smell good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My hands are clean. I like this it's song. So I mean, I like shackles. Right. But we, we changed it for you. Yeah, there you go. There we go. The case uh oh. Hey, everybody. Uh oh, she got a little neck roll. Did you see it? The last second. I can't with y'all. Okay. Um, hey, down. everybody. Welcome back to Mary Mary Bahama Drama. And Lord, there was some drama. Mm. Mm. Sure enough. So we are ready to get into it. I got my co host with me. I am your host, Ashita Andre. And I have. Hey, guys. I'm Chloe Onyx. And I'm Lemon Gonzalez. And my hands are clean. Lemon Gonzalez. Oh That's God. a side thing that we had going on here be. before we got yes. on air. It smells here. great. Yeah, you had awesome. some lettuce on your right. finger. I, I have OCD, guys. <laughs> Don't right. judge me. Right. You I can sideline that. text me. I'll let you guys know what that's all about. Right. So, yeah, I had to help him out with some antibacterial spray. Mm, cool. I'm right. glad we now got that Now it smells like out. coconut mm, bliss. So right? You're welcome. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. I feel like I need a pina colada. Right <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's get into it. <laughs> So speaking of pina colada, yes. they going to the Bahamas. I know. Bahamas. Roll that Should in there. I, yeah, right. they're going right. to work like that. Work that. <laughs> yeah. But Mitch is not going. I know. And he didn't know he's not going. I know. So again, lack of communication. What's going on? That's the end end. It is the end end, but he doesn't know it's the end end. He I thinks know. he's going to Bahamas. He even said I cleared my schedule. My schedule. That's embarrassing. I felt bad. Yeah. Did I you did feel too. bad for real? I really did. Because he was like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bond like no we're not Mitch we're not bonding you're not going, no. you're not going. but why didn't they tell him that well, he wasn't going I think well I think because first of all they said it was for family they wanted it to keep it family oriented and plus you know they had <clears throat> excuse me the other guys their husbands had to show Ooh. the soul seekers so they were going for that and so they're like well, let's just make it a family affair and again because Mitch is not I mean he is family but he's not really a good piece of family right now because of everything that's going on so I think it was a way for them to not only kind of experience that time with their family but also kind of separate from him and kind of get a break from him that's what I think and I agree with you but they should tell him this i want yes. to share something okay. guys yeah. this is see you guys see that this is a circle of trust <laughs> <laughs> this is mitch <laughs> way outside that's mitch this is the circle right, of trust right. way outside you guys see that I, yes he's way way i don't outside. know why i just had that flashback I'm, i really like the movie that came from but i just think poor mitch i felt bad for him let me see what else I wanted to say about that. But I'm happy he's going to get fired. <laughs> Wait, you can't do that. I do feel bad for him. You feel bad for him, but you're I excited he's getting fired? I feel bad for him because he was, you know, like he thought, like, I cleared my schedule to be there. Uh -huh. You know, they're mad when I'm not there. Uh -huh. But at the same token, I'm like, Shh, thank God it's over. Like, you know, it's a torturous weekly thing that we right. go through like oh right. my god is it gonna be over oh my god mm -hmm. and so i just felt bad for the fact that he was like i cleared my schedule we're going we're gonna go have fun and we're mm -hmm. gonna bond and they were just like no Negative. but i am happy that they just finally decided to cut the cord like because it's just ridiculous at this point yes well that that is definitely going to happen next season i mean next episode next season I know, <laughs> next episode i'm like, already <laughs> no but oh, but do you think I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Giving their track record, I know they said in the episode, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Do you really think they're going to fire him next episode? I mean, these are not predictions yet, but just saying. Giving the track record, because he should have been fired. It, he may be a long fired time ago. like toward the last five minutes of the next episode. Oh, okay. so you think <laughs> Maybe they'll, go, they'll prolong or, it again. Gotcha. Yeah. Or I feel they'll hold it off to the finale. Maybe. 
But I think that what's different about this episode is they finally say we're going to fire him. That's never right. been said before. Mm, That's really? The di- yeah, the, it's always, oh, we're going to try to give Mitchell another chance. Oh, I should fire think that, him or whatever. Like, what do you, yeah, it's always like, what do you think? Like, now everybody's clear cut up, across the board. It's like, gonna that's like it. It's, gonna happen. it's just, mm. when is it going to happen? It's going to mm. happen after the Bahamas. Yeah. They go spend time with family mm-hmm. and then they're going to make the decision. And that's never happened before. It's always been, oh my God, should we keep going? Oh my mm-hmm. God, should we not? It's always been an up in the air thing. Now mm-hmm. it's just definitive. Done. Yes. Well, they, I'm looking forward to next episode. Me too. Hmm. So, they're, you know, the family makes it to the Bahamas and then we find out what's going on with Miss Alana mm-hmm. and her husband. Yeah. I'm like, marriage is not easy. And I have it's no just idea not. About and it. I didn't have an idea either. I didn't have any idea either, but it's like I, I I feel that it's good that she's able to open up to her sisters because a lot of us feel like we can't talk to anyone and share our problems. So mm-hmm. it's good that she's able to open up to Erica and Tina and they can shed some light on what it's like, especially Tina, what she's going through to help her not fall into the same right. marital issues that she's going through. And I think it's good that, you know, because I was waiting to see, because I remember last epi- uh, season mm-hmm. when she got married and, and mm-hmm. everything that happened. And I was like, so what happened? You know, I wanted to kind of get a follow up. So it was good to see them, mm-hmm. both of them in the episode and kind of them talking and kind of saying they have issues and want to go to counseling and work it out. Yeah, hey, which is good. Because black people never want to go to counseling. <laughs> we think anything a, with a what? doctor <laughs> is not for our culture. <laughs> We well, think that bipolar just doesn't exist in our culture. Right. Let me tell you, it does. Yeah. <laughs> we are just so against anything that's benefiting us that has to do with like a doctor or that's going to make us better medically. You know, yeah. Like aside of well, I'm not going to say that because we're going to get to that. But most times, and it has to do with a disorder or or. Uh, marriage and and seeking outside help professionally like we're just like oh no like no we don't do that that's you think for all them. black people are like that no i'm not stereotyping all black people but my experience as a woman of color mm-hmm. many of our people do not <laughs> feel that it's for us gotcha if you disagree let me know if you think i'm bugging or crazy but, and if you agree, let me know so the next week I could tell you how to vote when. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't thank you very much. Next. Mm. Yes, do you agree with that? Because I agree with that. See? Okay. I do. That's I two do. against. I didn't say I, well, I, I do. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Because a lot of us do not want to go to counseling. Mm. And a lot of us really just don't want to, or let me speak on behalf of some women, especially Mm -hmm. women that I have come across, Mm -hmm. they will say, well, he married me like this. This is who I am. Mm. I don't need to fix it. I don't need to adjust. You knew it, and Mm -hmm. you took the bait, and you married me, and boom, this is how it is. That's so horrible. So you have to, I I, I agree with you in saying that, especially speaking from, you know, a woman of color and Mm -hmm. having many Mm -hmm. friends who are married, and I say, hey, maybe you guys should try counseling, right. they would sit there and say, I'm sorry, this is, I don't cook, didn't cook when you met me, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna cook when you marry me. Wow. There it is, you get what you get. You get what you get. Hmm. What about like <clears throat> growing, evolving? Like I believe like all people, human be- whatever, like your purpose in life is to grow, expand, evolve, change, mm-hmm. no? I agree. Oh yeah, it should I be. think that Experience. sometimes you hit a wall such as Teddy, you know, we'll go into Teddy in a minute, but you you hit a wall or something happens to where you go, oh, I need to change, I need to work on this, mm-hmm. or my marriage is being threatened, or my friendships are no longer there anymore, or my mom is mad at me, or my brother is mad at me, really, mm-hmm. let me just really take a look at myself and say, hey, I need to work on this, I need to fix it. But it's not until something happens when we say, you know what, I need to work on that. Yeah. I think the, a big thing is compromise. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I'll, none of us, obviously, we've just said we've never been married, but I my parents... Oh, you have, sorry. I have. I've been married. Uh, and I uh, was a girl that didn't cook and didn't want to change. Uh, <laughs> that's why I said that. I see. Oh, Alicia's speaking from experience. I'm telling the truth here. Amen. But I'm now... Sure. Testify. A sister can cook. Yeah, she, she can do it. She can do it. She done changed yeah. it. Right. Well, the point I was going to make is I, I've never been married, and um, I do have friends that have been married and are not married anymore because 
it was hard for them to learn the act of compromise. My parents have been married for 39 years and looking at them as a model, uh, and my mom is, you talk about black women, my mom's a strong black woman and she don't take nothing, but I think she had to learn with my father that they had, there was a level of compromise. You gotta trust God, number one, but then you have to learn to compromise with each other so you can make it work. You know, mm. everybody can't, you know, be going at each other and you know what I'm saying? Everybody has to know their place in the situation and know how to interact with each other, you know, and I think you complement your strengths and weaknesses. And I think it's important, like you said, that if you can't make it work, that you get outside help of professionals. So counseling is needed. Um, and I think that we, as a people, black people, Mexicans, white people, everybody, if you marriage ain't working out there, get counseling. <laughs> No. And, be, and you know what? And be honest in counseling. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of people are not honest in counseling. Right. I guess you guys know I'm speaking from experience here. But <laughs> mm. Yes, it, it's, it's so important. When you make it, when you decide to agree and say, hey, we're going to go to counseling, then be honest in mm -hmm. counseling both sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the only way that you're going to make it work. Sure. If you're just honest. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you guys this question. And the viewers, this is a very important question. Uh, Tina was upset with her sisters because they were not more mad at Teddy. Mm. How, how do you guys, especially now that you have sisters, how do you feel? Have you ever been dealt with a situation where your sister broke up and they, she wanted you to be more upset at her boyfriend? Because I'm an only child, so I can't relate to this. Okay. Um, not, not so much that. I had a situation where my sister thought that I should just be more supportive of her doing whatever she wanted to do in a marriage. And it's hard because you don't, I get where Erica's coming from as far as like, you want to support your sister, you want to support the marriage, you don't want to do any, you know, you don't want to do anything that is shading the, your brother-in-law, you know, right. but you want to be there for your <clears throat> sister in, in that time. And, and I would say that it is a tough, predicament to be in mm -hmm. it is pretty tough because you don't know how to be or you don't know what's right and what's wrong when there's a lot of wrong on both sides you know right right and so you you're trying to be supportive you're trying to be more supportive of course your blood but I mean at the end of the day it's all family so it's like how hard are you supposed to be and then how forgiving are you supposed to be right Anything you want to say about that? Um, yeah, I think, um, well, in Tina's case, when I saw that and I kind of, you know, I kind of felt some kind of way, only because I know that she was going, they obviously have a tight-knit family. They have a big family. I come yes. from biggest five siblings. Um, so, and I'm the oldest. So I can understand when you want your family to have your back. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, Teddy's family, but this is your sisters. These are your girls. This is who you grew up with. This is your your immediate family. So, yes, I don't think she had it. I don't think she was wrong for wanting the support of her family. But at the same token, you got to look at everything. Because mm -hmm. if if she's not doing good in the in the in relationship or she could be better and that's causing him to kind of stray then she has to work on that you can't support someone that's not doing what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so just take my side because you're my brother right. even though i just did all of this and i was wrong and da da da, da. Yeah. i mean that's just not fair right so i understand why she wanted her family to have her back but at the same time she you know has to take ownership and and anybody would in that situation now she was saying that she was really upset that they were not more upset. Right. But how more upset are you supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> because you're working it out. Right. Yeah. So now I have to take a step back as a sister and respect the fact that you're working it out with your husband. Right. So I can't be too upset. Or too hard on or him. Or too hard on him yeah. because mm -hmm. I can't make it hard for him to mm -hmm. want to work it out with you. Right. Yeah. So that's where I kind of was like, well, okay, Tina, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not team Tina on that one. Right. And that's where Erica was just saying, like, you know, well, what, am, what do you want me to do? You right. want me to be mad at him today? Right. You want me to forgive him right. tomorrow? Right. <laughs> Y'all working it out now? So yeah, that's it's it's a tough situation. That's a tough I think situation. it's just it's and and, and it's frustration. You know, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you 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 could tell she loves her husband. Yeah. She cares for her husband. Years. Yeah, that's a long time. And so it's easy to get frustrated with the situation to the point where you're like, why won't you mad at him? Why won't you? You should be mad at him today and tomorrow and, okay, give him a break on Friday. But then Sunday, be mad again. I mean, you know, because you're emotional. Yeah. You know, you're, you're fighting for your relationship. But at the same time, you don't, you know, you're, you may seem irrational because of the state that you're in. And to add to that, in the article in Ebony, she spoke about 
forgiveness mm -hmm. and she decided to forgive Teddy within one week of knowing mm -hmm. about his affair. Look, 13 so that's years. Not a, yeah, but you're still one week, not two months, not time to, I mean. So you're saying that's a short time for her to. That's a short time. For her to forgive well, him? Well, not a short time for her to forgive him because she said that she still loves him and mm -hmm. that was what yeah. she felt because she said she prayed mm -hmm. and she wanted to forgive him. Mm -hmm. So she gave herself a week mm -hmm. and then she said, okay, I'm going to forgive him. That's right. a decision that I am making. So at that moment, you cannot expect your family members to still be upset several weeks later. If you, if ah, you made that I in see. Ebony magazine, she consciously made a decision. I'm going to forgive my after husband one week of after finding one out. week of finding out. Interesting. So you can't still expect everybody else right. to be upset with him after you forgive after him. you forgiven him mm, so that that's my argument yeah. and let me know what you guys think if you guys agree with me or not on this art in this situation so tina erica warren they all have lunch and this is when they decide to let mitch go mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh tina talks about how she's starting to have anxiety about the article mm -hmm. and warren makes a comment saying well hey that's just tough you decided to. You spilled the beans. You spilled the beans. Right. So hey, would you guys think that was fair for him to say that? I think it was you real think for he, him. You to think say that it. he should have a little bit more compassion, or you think that he's just being real about it? Well, like hey, you spilled it. I, too I, bad. I think Tina, <laughs> according to what we've seen, you know, in the previous um, seasons, this is the third season of Mary Mary. So um, what the cameras have allowed to show us and her personality and things of that nature, she seems to be very much. Um, she does kind of what she wants, you know, she's, uh, even, um, Erica made a statement when, um, uh, you know, they went in the fiasco that happened with Google and her team and how Erica was like, if Tina was in here, you know, it'd be a whole yeah. different situation. She would go, you know, and that's kind of her thing. She's very feisty. She kind of does what she wants to do. And if she doesn't want to <clears throat> do it, it's not going to happen kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Warren, of course, has known her for years as her brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So here she is like, oh my gosh, what, a, you know, I'm, I'm anxiety. And he's like, he's trying to keep it real with her. Like, well, you did that. And I don't think that that's wrong or insensitive i think he was just kind of giving it to her straight right you know based on you know she didn't have to it's not like they pressured her you know she decided that's what she wanted to do well that's what you wanted to do so now you have to you know what they say make your bed you gotta lie in it absolutely i just feel like sometimes when we do things that we might be dead set on in the moment and this is what it is when it's a big decision or a big thing you know we all get some anxiety and you know, I can myself can relate to it. I mean, for her, it's a story about her marriage in Ebony, which I don't think is a huge thing. It's not like someone caught her in a porno tape. It's just her telling the truth about her life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like my own personal experience, for five years I knew I'm moving to L.A. As soon as I finished college, I'm moving to L.A. And the moment... You know, I packed all my stuff, I sent it to L.A., and I sat on the plane, and in that moment I was so nauseous because mm. it was me by myself, all my stuff shipped there, and I have to rebuild my life. Now, I knew I was doing this forever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was set on it, and I knew it was the right thing for me, just like she knew that putting that article out was the right thing for her. She knows that when she touches someone that she'll be healed. But when that actual moment comes into realization, no matter what it is in our lives, you know, you get that that anxious feeling or that nauseous. When I graduated high school, I was so nauseous. Right, I was because the reality sets <laughs> in. Because the reality sets in. Right. And these were all great things in my life, you know, like I don't regret ever moving to mm -hmm. LA. But when it's realized, like she it was realized mm -hmm. for her in that moment and it's like, wow, okay. So it's I, coming. It's coming. And I feel like she knows it's a good thing in the end, but it's just that I guess we all go through that Ooh, moment. Kind of go through it. Yeah. And so Warren's just a jerk for doing that. <laughs> no, for real. Well, you know what? It's interesting because we I read all comments on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were against her sharing her story in Ebony Magazine. But it's, hmm. why? Because they said that it's a personal matter, that it should be dealt within the family. And we as an audience, as fans, should not know what's going on. But guess what? She's a celebrity. And if she wouldn't have said it, someone would have been trying to dig it up from 20 feet under right. some, somewhere, sometimes, somehow. So I feel like especially when you're someone in the limelight, it's more important to be open so that someone can't attack you in that way later. Right, right. 
I think a good argument too is, you know, her telling her story. You got to understand that these are gospel artists. These are Christians. Their whole message that they do is spreading the good news of the gospel. And I think because she is not only a celebrity, but she's a Christian faith-based celebrity that professes the love of Jesus and being a Christian, I think she felt that that was a release for her. And her fans um, can get something out of that saying, look, I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, because it's easy to portray. You look at pastors and, and you, you know, they're coming like, oh, look at the pastor and his wife. And, you know, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Sure, you know, the truth. Um, so the thing is, unless they <laughs> vocalize it, unless yeah. they say it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And if they choose to do that, it's for the sake of their congregation to show that, you know, we went through this and God healed us. And I think for her, I think it was a message for saying like, yes, this happened, this infidelity happened, but I forgave him in a week and we're pressing forward because yes. we believe God to help us. So I think, you you know, I commend her for sharing her story. Would I have done that? I don't know. But I think for her, I think that's the reason why, because it, it is in line with her message and what right. they're about. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But a lot of people on YouTube said, no, they sh she shouldn't have done it. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I disagree. <laughs> I feel she's very strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. And for her, this is her way to heal. So let you got to let people just be them, you know? Like, of course, when you're doing something public, you're always going to be judged. So at the end of the day, you just got to do what, what you, you got to do. do. What's good for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then we go into Alana and Dez, and Alana asks her husband, saying, hey, we're having some problems, we're having some issues. I think we should go to counseling. Would you go with us? Would you go with me? Mm -hmm. And he agreed which I think was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most men put up a fight. I know, but you had to see that so, moment in his eye. He was like, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was some hesitation there. Like, really? There was definitely there some, was hesitation. some hesitation. I'm there. surprised he didn't go, but why? There's nothing wrong, you know? Like, right. Plusly, mm. too, for it being so soon. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, how long have they been married? A year, if that? I mean, they got married yeah. last season. Last I'm not season. showing how they tape or whatever, yeah. but it, it it's, heck, couldn't be more than a year, so... It's, I think also, too, when you look at that, it's like, we need counseling already? It's a year? You know, it's all, <laughs> no, really, I mean, yeah, it's a viable thing. You're, like, you're thinking like, oh, we don't need counseling. It's only, but you know, and that's an easy way to think that, you know, no, nah, I'm good. But essentially, if you feel like you need it, I think it's good to do it. And I'm glad that they decided that they were going to do that. And what, also, too, which is good, is that when you decide to go to counseling before your marriage mm -hmm. hits major trouble, mm -hmm. you are able to deal with your issues yes, better because yes. then you're not at that hate I hate you mm -hmm. I can't stand you I can't look at you and look now at the counselor from look at her look at I her am face. I'm thinking about <laughs> oh, no. like, judge me okay. right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because then at that point mm -hmm. whatever the counselor is sharing with you and telling you and and, and giving you homework assign mm -hmm. assignments because you do have homework assignments when you go home you're able to do them freely mm -hmm. Mm. when I look at you and I can't stand you I don't want to talk to you, mm. which means that whatever homework I have to do with you, I don't want to do it. Mm. Mm. So it's always good to have that moment where you say, you know what? Something is coming up. We can't handle it within ourselves. We try. Let's go get outside help, have a counselor. Maybe they can see it from a different perspective, mm -hmm. solve the problem, and move on. See, I'm into preventative measures <laughs> in all <laughs> measures of my life. So... I wouldn't be trying to go to marriage counseling when there's a problem. I would be trying to go to marriage counseling when we're in bliss so that we can prevent mm. these problems. And honestly, I feel like now um, I've actually heard of a lot of counseling that goes on before you get married. Premarital counseling. Premarital counseling. We need to do the premarital. We need to do the after the marriage. Just, just, just so we're here. You know, like I feel like people get married and they're just – not here right, anymore right. and and then it turns into like she says like we'll we'll both be trying to get to point z but the way we get there is so different that we that we fight with each other we need to know that before we get married that we use different measures to get there and we need to just respect that about each other mm. and i feel like those are some you know like i don't know if they had premarital counseling but again i'm a preventative person <laughs> I'm all about the preventative you measures. Like a, you want like a well, counseling like once a year, like a checkup. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like you, you know do what? Here, Don't go to the doctor when your leg is blown up and they need to like cut it off. Right. You need to go to the doctor just when you're feeling great. Like, all right, let's just do some blood work to make mm -hmm. sure. Like, right. that's just my thing, you know? And I agree with you on that, actually, because I went to premarital counseling. And I will tell you this. Premarital counseling, depending on where you go, the premarital counseling that I went to 
was for one because I wanted to get married at the church. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they go, oh yeah, you have to have premarital counseling just to get mm -hmm. married at the church. You're not in it mm -hmm. because basically my end game is to get married at the church. Not the counseling. Not the counseling. Mm -hmm. And then when you do go, it's very surface. Mm -hmm. It's very, okay, so you guys want to have kids? Yeah, we want to have kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, how's your finance? Our finances are great. We're, mm -hmm. you know, everything is great. He has his checking account. I have my checking account. We have a joint checking account when we get married, and we're really good with money. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> so uh, do you guys know where you want to live? Yes, we, you know, we know where we want to live. We're going to stay here in Los Angeles. Everything is great because you're in the excitement mode. Mm -hmm. You're in the I'm happy mode. Mm -hmm. But... Then there's the after I do's when things come into play and it's real. Right. Like the reality sets in. Mm -hmm. Well, why do we have to go to your bank? Why can't we use my bank? Well, because my bank has free checking at the time. I'm you know, sharing a little bit of my story here. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to go with my bank. I'm the man. I'm the head. Mm -hmm. I do what I want to do. Okay, well, you know, fine. All right, here you go. Okay, well, I'm not ready to have children yet. Because I didn't realize two years would flew by so fast. I have mm. other things that I want to do. Well, I want to have kids right now. Mm. And these are the things. So these are the things that you don't think about when you are planning a wedding because you're in wedding mode. Mm. You're not in marriage mode. Mm. Now you have several churches that mm. has extensive premarital classes where it's six weeks long and they dive deep mm -hmm. and they give you scenarios which is very healthy. But at the time, still, you're kind of like, all right, well, you know, I'll, I'll just, you know, he's the head of the household, you know, I'll just go with my husband, but mm. it doesn't work that way. Because mm. it's like, no, 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 wait a minute. When you're married, you want to do what you want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's, it's hard, because you don't have children yet. And when you decide to have children, when, you, when you're in the mar getting married stage, you don't have kids, but then when you get married, it's like, oh, well, I want to raise my child Catholic. Okay, but I'm Christian. Mm. So how do we do that? Yeah, because well, I already put, have in yes, my mindset. How you want to, okay, well, I want to <laughs> put my child in private school, but I don't. And it you costs know what too much. the answer will always be? I had to hold this child for <laughs> nine months. What was your ass doing? Oh, I promise you, exactly. I will use it to the exactly. wheels for love. <laughs> So that's why it's so hard. <laughs> no, you know, you say that. What can a man say to that? I, I what say can nothing. a man say to that? I didn't say nothing. You see, I was quiet. But see, the man is more financial because it's like, well, how much does this cost? Mm -hmm. And then the woman's like, well, I don't care because we're based on emotion. I want my child to have the best. I want my mm -hmm. child to have the best too, mm -hmm. but how much does it cost? And there goes the friction, which you don't discuss in premarital counseling because you don't have children if mm -hmm. some of them don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So that's why it becomes hard when you try to plan for the worst mm. or plan for something because you're not emotionally there yet until you're so there. So, men, if you don't have unlimited finances, don't come my way. No, <laughs> I'm joking. It's, it's a joke. It's a joke. So, uh, let's, let's move on because I could go on this for days about yes, marriage and amen. stuff. So, Goose Glam Suite. Mm -hmm. See, here's a problem. Why do you even have to have a conversation on how to be professional? Because they in the Bahamas. They trying to get crazy. Like... But Why is that even an issue? No, I agree with you. The fact that you had to have the conversation, you're already losing. Yes. You're already losing. Like, okay, you guys, this is a professional atmosphere, da-da-da-da. And then after having the conversation, they still go and blow it. They came in on CPT time. If you don't know what that is, don't ask me. <laughs> they came in on CPT time, which is already bad. Mm -hmm. and, and then they were liquored up on yes. top of that. That's just bad. See, this is why they don't want to hire us. For things if you know what I mean yeah and that is just a bad example but but it, what was really bad was that they were great at what they did as Tina you know Tina who takes no BS she said mm. she was like 26 minutes mm. like it was mm. on. so you know that they're great at what they do but you the professionalism that it just looks that's right bad. and that's the problem is why do I even have to have this conversation mm -hmm. with adults right that have a business that say that they want to do things and I have to tell you about being on time and being professional in front of my sister right who is a client, client. a client client yes. a, a very big client to have period that ain't, that ain't good y'all it's not good at all all right teddy, <laughs> teddy and warren oh, oh gosh we, we go. finally get to the moment yes. where he had multiple countless countless affairs affairs did he did he use the name countless yes, yes. Oh. countless affairs yes and what did warren say i always misquote it he's like he's like this is passed on fire like it's <laughs> boiling over oh yeah that line yeah he like, said it, it's, like it's, yeah it's like it's beyond hot yeah, yeah exactly. like i don't want to add fuel to the fire he's like it's already burnt or yeah, something like, like that yeah, yeah it, it's just 
That's crazy. So Warren gives him advice and says, tell him after we leave Bahamas. You believe yeah, that tell was, Tina after I mean, Tina, do you believe that was good advice? Yes. yes. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. It's it was, her birthday. Right. Well, it's not only her birthday. But it's weighing so heavy on right. him. He has to release it. I know. And that's what he's struggling with. He better with. sing it out with the soul seeker. <laughs> 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 Which actually surprised me. That's I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. Word. You were a soul seeker. You didn't go and seek your soul? <laughs> wait. For all these First talents. Of all, uh, first of all, I'm mad that Teddy's a damn drummer and Warren's a damn business executive with his own label. And Teddy's a damn lead singer and Warren's a backup singer in this group that just appears out of nowhere. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Rewind that back. First of all, wait, it, wait. Didn't, it didn't appear to know. They've been around for a long time. Really? They have been around for a long time, yes. I've okay. heard of the soul. They've been around. They're just, they fly under the radar because, you know, Mary Mary is going to be is the ultimate, and of right, course the they all right. have their own. You know, Warren, like you said, is an executive. Yeah, you know, he's got the whole label situation, and then Teddy's a drummer for the yeah. Tonight Show, so that's their main gig. So this this is something that they do together, kind of for fun. But they've been around for a long time. Wow. So they didn't just, I was very surprised. Yeah, they didn't appear out of nowhere. I was too. Yeah, I was they, like, run that yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised what he was singing, what he's going through. I'm sitting uh -huh. here like. Here's my thing, and I'm not, I, I get we're all not perfect, mm -hmm. I understand that, but at some point, when you're singing that, singing gospel, mm -hmm. and you're praying, and you're, you're talking to the Lord, mm -hmm. why do you keep having countless? Why do you keep having multiple? Uh, can I can, tell you? Can you help me? I'm a, Demons. I'm help, you. I'm help, <laughs> help me joking, out. Help me out. Help you. Okay. So, this mm. is the thing. Um, you have to deal with your issues. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, and there's been other instances, and I can call them out, I won't, but there's been other, you know, Christian, um, you know, people in positions, whether they've been entertainers, whether they've been pastors or whatever, yeah. and they have these, you know, and we can What's call What's his it, like name on Preachers of L.A.? He's the main one, Dietrich. He's talking about Dietrich Haddon. Yeah. yeah. They was, like, crucifying him. Yeah. I was yeah. like, but he didn't have affairs. He got he, divorced. Well, he, but he, he wasn't still, he wasn't divorced yet. He was in the middle of a divorce, but then got mm. another person pregnant mm -hmm. who wasn't his wife. Mm. So that's where that came about. But is that cheating? I'm so I know we're going off. We're going into a whole other right. show right it's, now. It's, yeah, it's not cheating, but again, it's sin because you got to understand right. that for, for for Christians, first of all, you're not even divorced yet, so you're still technically married. Yeah. So even though you're not with that person, mm -hmm. that still would be considered adultery. And then not only is it adultery, you're having, you know, uh, you have a baby out of wedlock with someone that you're not married to. So it's like a a, a double whammy. Exactly. So that's <laughs> why, and in his position, mm -hmm. I mean, somebody on the street does that, we don't care, but because of his position. Yeah. And I think with going back to what you asked about Teddy, if you don't deal with that inside, it's just going to keep coming up. And the thing is, he just never dealt with it. He just kept getting away with it and kept getting away with it and kept yeah. getting away with it until it ate him so much to where he had to say something. And that's what it got to. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're so saying. So if you don't deal I'm with it, it's just going to happen. Well, I'm not, and you shouldn't be. I can't, it's hard for me. It, yeah. I'm just like, really, Teddy? Yeah, yeah. Skeleton is just busting out the closet. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Like, right. It's crazy. Uh, listen, yeah, and you shouldn't, I don't have any skeletons. Yeah. <laughs> no. Zero. Ask me, I'm going to tell you. Right. Right. Mary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, I think, it, you know, and like I said, I don't think you sh anybody should feel sorry for him. Um, he has to deal with that himself. And until he deals with that, the core of that is going to keep happening. And that's just with anybody, not just him, but anybody that has issues, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, with uh, staying faithful or, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is. Can we backtrack for mm -hmm. a moment? I don't know if you guys realize this, but... And I mentioned this to you when they were sitting on the couch, Warren and Teddy mm -hmm. and Warren. No, Teddy goes into all his countless affairs. Warren dead yeah. ass says, oh, I've been there. Like, I know what he's going through. Right. I was like, wait, hold on. There's just too many surprises. <laughs> and well, remember episode, Erica said that. She did, but he confirmed it's, it. Right. She, you know, she kind of like, oh, we've been through our stuff. He's like, yeah. I remember when I was there. So it's just like, okay. Right. 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 Well, I think I think he was trying to empathize with him for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't I don't think it would have been to the level that he's saying, but yeah, maybe not. Sure. But he's yeah. been there to some extent, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean he's with did it with Erica. You got to understand. What do you mean? I'm saying he said he's been there, meaning he's cheated, but we don't know if it was with Erica. I would think so. I mean, I it's very it's very plausible. Because well, the way Erica makes it sound like, you know, like it was, was traumatic, like, mm -hmm. you know. Without it saying serious. it flat out, she yeah. mentioned she said that. that it was, yeah. They both said it without saying it. That's how I took yeah. it. Yeah. The implication. I mean, okay. we could be wrong. Tell us what you think. 
I'm just saying, pal. <laughs> so here's my question. You get caught and then all of a sudden it just the urge just goes away. You don't want to cheat anymore. Lies. No. You know no. what I mean? So Lies. it's like and that's the part that is hard for me because okay, so you cheated, mm -hmm. you admitted that you was wrong, we work it out, and then what? The next cute girl that comes by. I mean like Yeah, that is hard. It's just I don't I what you goes, tell us, <laughs> man. I, I just don't well, <laughs> It goes back, uh, like I said, it goes back to where it, what I said before. You have to deal with the core of the issue. Whether if you get caught or not, it's just like you look at it for someone that is a criminal, let's mm -hmm. say. And um, they, you know, they rob banks or whatever. So they rob banks until they get caught, right? Mm -hmm. They get caught, they get thrown in jail, they're in jail for 10 years, right? Mm. When they get out, do you think the urge is gone? Yes. Unless, Nobody wants to be in jail again no, for 10 let me years. Tell you if they haven't dealt with that, the urge could still be there. It's just like a drug addict. A drug addict could see them body deteriorating. Mm. And they'll be like, get help, go to rehab. Go. And then all of a sudden, they'll get an itch and then go back to it, even though they know it's damaging. Mm. So you have to deal with the core of the issue. And if he hasn't dealt with the core of the issue, no matter he gets caught 10 times, mm. unless you deal with it, it's still going to happen. And that's why men end up cheating over and over again. So you're saying that as soon as Teddy deals with the issue, he would not necessarily be like cured. I don't know if the word, but no, he would he I mean, be able to fight the urge a little bit exactly. better. Exactly. I mean, it's it's, whether it's, it's it's counseling. It's whatever you know. what I'm saying you ever got to do. You got to go to Jesus. Well, you what's know. the urge? Do you do you know? What do you mean? What is the urge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got real nervous, y'all. I just want to let y'all know. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> for cheating, like, do you know, like, what's the urge? Like, uh, he's been married for thirteen years, right. uh, and I guess maybe three, four, five of those years he's been cheating. Like, I mean, I, well, I'm, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Again, I've never been married. I've never cheated on anyone that I was really? with. Really? That's he said never. He's a good man, y'all. So, but what I'm saying is, what I could say is, if he's unhappy in his relationship, okay. that's definitely going to feed into it. You know, we all have certain desires. We have to suppress them. So if you're unhappy in a situation, it's just basically going to come more to the forefront to the point where, you know, let me do it because I can, you know, see if I can get away with it. You get away with it once. Oh, well, that was easy. Let me try it again. And then it just mm. it becomes a repetition effect. Sounds so like, like what's a like a bad an, habit, a bad habit. So now you got to fight the bad habit and the issue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. it's not a game. Uh, yeah, just it's not pray, a game. guys. Go in your prayer yeah. closet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Seriously. But yeah, you really. I mean, and again, since th we're talking about people who profess to be Christians, it's really in that situation. It's going to God and like God, I need some help. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I need help. I need to be delivered. And until you do that, really, then it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. It's not going to wow. go away. Wow. Tina got a fight. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Mm. Aren't those the magic words? Um, sh magic? I don't know about magic, but they are in the Bible. Okay. Aren't those... No, no let me not say that anyway. Aren't those the words of wisdom? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rewording, guys. Rewording. So we're going to move on and uh, talk about something very sad. Dad has stage four cancer. Mm. Erica was told right before hitting the stage. Wow. And, I, you know, she decided to not tell anyone. Mm -hmm. Go on stage, sing a song come out off stage barely and you know the party and decided to tell everyone after the party now tina on stage was just feeling it uh -huh. and she was talking about how she was inspired by her husband mm -hmm. yet he's sitting there and like she don't know she don't know <laughs> she don't know <laughs> what i'm about to tell her wow that's heavy that's very heavy so I'm, I'm sad that their father um, has stage four cancer. I do agree with her on waiting to tell everyone, mm -hmm. you know, afterwards. For sure. And Tina and Teddy had some alone time, mm. which is what they needed. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see the heaviness on him. And I can see the love that she has for Teddy in her eyes every time mm. she looks at him. I see it on, yeah. on TV. Mm -hmm. I just feel bad about what's going to happen next. I do. I, I feel because Heavy. with the father, that is a lot. And, I mean, it's sad that the world we live in right now, everyone is dropping dead like flies. I hate mm -hmm. to say it like that from cancer, but it's real. And I just felt a little uneasy with Erica's comment. Like, you know, my dad's a fighter. and He's going to get through this. And in my mind, I wanted to say most people with stage four cancer are, are going to pass. Mm -hmm. That is 
the sad existence like once you've reached over a certain stage and we all just have this belief like you know what well, our family members gonna make it and I've had family members that have died died from cancer and, and the first thing we're like we're gonna fight it they're gonna fight it but it's like you got to be honest they're not gonna change the way they eat they're not gonna change the way they live and the way you know Western society culture is they're not gonna really give him what he needs to survive stage four cancer do you know what I mean really I've I've never been that close I haven't been that close mm -hmm. to someone who's had stage four mm -hmm. so I don't know no, but yeah. it's they they don't change the way they eat they don't what I will say is that a lot of the ways that Western society or Western medical uh, research and things are done for cancer specifically like America mm -hmm. is not you know that beneficial like they're gonna chemo you up until you to you kick I'm being so <laughs> honest with you I mean wow. so honest with you and I'm actually gonna do a plug here because I actually have a new show coming out on black Hollywood live it's urban wellness and beauty where we will tell you more natural ways to take care of yourself and be preventative of things like cancer nice yeah so you know just because like the way we live that you know like it catches up with us especially now think about it how high are the cancer rates and how high are the death rates from cancer in right. the last five to six years ten years even now it's stage four or stage one and two stage, or just you just well, are you saying you're just saying in general just in general, in general. Oh, and the okay. fact that a lot of cancers are not being detected until stage three four five five wow yeah well we hope you know daddy makes it through and you know, maybe there are prayers and there'll be a miracle and we can just say, hallelujah, he made it. Mm. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Well, do we, we don't know yet. Yeah. What, we, we just know that he's in the hospital. Oh, okay. At least I don't know. With stage four. Uh -huh. With stage four. Cancer. So well, stage one and two is very different well, from we, four and five. Okay. Yeah, we, go we, ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just saying we, we're not going to talk about what happens. Oh, yeah, maybe no, we'll, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll okay. wait. Yeah, so we'll go. Well, let's just go into predictions right now. Okay. Yeah. Let's just knock it out. Do so it. we're going to go into predictions. Okay. And Ooh. now, your After Buzz TV predictions. I'm going to start and say that my prediction is Mitch will be fired. Oh, <laughs> I'm mad she took and my prediction. Tina is going is just going to just just go crazy mm. on Teddy. Mm. Yes, mm. that's what I think. Mm, mm, mm. She took my prediction. I'm sorry. You okay. can have the same prediction. You can have the same prediction. Well, I just wanted to say that prediction because it's the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I predict for the next show that, ooh, I think Warren and Erica's little in the past infidelity thing might be rehashed to a degree or at least some problems because of Tina and Teddy's situation because just like Warren said, when they go through it, when Tina goes through it, Erica goes through it. So when Teddy goes through it, Warren's gonna go through it. So I can mm. see, see, that's why I like me to take the easy ones because then I can stir up some really. <laughs> I like it when really you guys stir up some. So yeah, so <laughs> I feel like um, Erica and Warren might have a little, a little rehash with their past because mm -hmm. I feel like the more we get into the season, the more you hear more about their situation right, right. that they don't want to tell us but it's slowly but surely coming out and once you know teddy pops that news and then gets tina riled and then tina tell eric and eric is gonna go for from warren mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. what are your predictions um okay so i will say um i i think and i don't know if it's going to be in next episode but um their father is going to pass um, mm. That's my prediction. I don't know how they're going to show it on the show or whatever, um, but I do predict that, and it's an unfortunate thing. Um, I think that there is going to be, I don't, I don't, I honestly think with Tina and um, and Teddy, um, I think that it's going to be the reverse. I think she definitely is a, is, is, is a firecracker, mm -hmm. but I think this is going to be like devastating to her. Mm. So I think it's going to have, she's going to implode as opposed to explode. Mm. That's what I think is going to happen when he tells her because she's already fragile. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just going to take her over the edge and just completely shatter her heart. So oh, wow. that's what I think. That's some good predictions. Yeah. That's Let deep. us know your predictions. Thank you so much for being with us today. Merry Merry After Show. I'm your host, Ashita Onre. You can find me on Twitter at Ashita Onre and Instagram and on Facebook. 
<laughs> hey guys, again, I'm Chloe Onyx. You can find me on Instagram at Chloe Onyx and on Twitter at Chloe Onyx 11. And uh, you can find me at The Poet Saint all day, every day, and that's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I want to make a quick plug. Um, Erica <laughs> Campbell's uh, new album came out this week and it's banging. It's called hey. Help. Ooh, and I've been yeah, listening yeah. to it all week. So check that out. If you're a fan of Mary Mary, you really should look at that. It's dope. Absolutely. Just a little emoji. Thank hey. you so much. <laughs> Keep clapping. I like that. I, uh, right. Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. later. <laughs> views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.